Thanks for checking out our newest PC build, the Scorpion. If you haven't noticed by the thumbnail of this video, the name will make sense shortly. This build consists of an AMD FX6300 hexa-core processor, an R9 380 GPU, 8GB of Crucial Ballistics RAM, and an EVGA 500W 80 Plus power supply. The featured parts of this build are a the AMD R9 380, we went with the XFX version of AMD's newest series based on old architecture but it'll be okay, and B the Cooler Master Hyper T4. Since our FX6300 is unlocked, we'll be doing a bit of overclocking. This custom cooler should get us to around 4.2-4.3 GHz overclock safely, which isn't bad on air mind you. So a motto many professional computer builders live by is assemble your computer outside of the case first to ensure that all parts are working properly. It would be a shame to assemble such a beautiful work of art only to have to deconstruct the entire thing once you find out that it won't post for some unknown reason. The first step in our building process is to design a makeshift test bench. We took apart an old TV stand made of plywood and salvaged the smaller leg portions to uphold our motherboard. Next, we sketched the dimensions of an ATX motherboard. You can find those blueprints here. Specifically, we wanted to ensure that our mounting pins, which we will install in the next step, align with the holes on our motherboard. Since we didn't have our motherboard at this point, everything was measured with a ruler. So we finished the framework for where the mounting pins will be for our ATX motherboard. Um, we'll have nine mounting pins and they'll be applied in these places on our board. Um, once we get all nine in there, we'll be able to kind of sit our motherboard on top of this. The measurements look to be pretty accurate, so we'll see how my amateurish drafting skills pay off once we set the motherboard on its pins on this block of wood. So the parts for our new build just walked in through the door, and I would like to present to you the Cooler Master Hyper T4. This part is critical to our build because we plan on overclocking our FX 6300. There's certainly some room to spare in terms of overclocking when it comes to that particular AMD processor. And with this Hyper T4, we should be able to push out around 4.4, 4.5 gigahertz safely uh, without having to up the voltage too much and without pushing our temp limits. Okay, so this is the box that all of your uh, mounting pins and um, screws would come in. Um, we're not gonna need this from what I've heard because our board is an AMD three plus board, AM three plus, um, we won't have to use these because the cooler itself automatically comes fit with that. Okay, so this isn't as big um, and that's good. I didn't want it to be too big. Okay. So the big selling point for me on this thing uh, was the fact that there are four exposed copper pipes on the bottom here. This is uh, perfect for you know, heat conductions, Thermo 101. And so I wanted to make sure that whatever I got had exposed copper piping on the bottom. This is where our CPU will be. I mean, it'll be right under this. So this will sit literally on top of our CPU and we should just be able to strap it into place um, and be good to go. And then of course we have our, our CPU fan header here. And uh, this is a four, four pin fan header, yeah. So it should run nice and quiet as well. It's a solid fan we've got on there. And uh, looking forward to slapping it in our computer. It's coming up uh, pretty soon, so stay tuned for that. Mounting our, well, mounting pins was relatively simple. We fastened a pea-sized ball of sticky tack to the bottom of each mounting pin and pressed each firmly into the board. These held up surprisingly well. To ensure that our board would be stable enough, we turned over the board flipped it face down with the pins in place and applied about 20 pounds of pressure to its bottom. Don't skip this step, a damaged motherboard is probably the most depressing discovery on the planet. We concluded that aesthetics outweighed our need for silence in this case, so we pulled off the stock Cooler Master fan that came pre-applied with our Hyper T4 and replaced it with a Senti 120mm blue LED fan. The procedure was simple, just remove the two brackets screwed into the back of the stock fan and reapply them to the Senti fan in the same fashion. Everything checks out.
We also have a longer 3-pin fan connector in this case, so we'll have to consider ways of cable managing it properly in the up and coming steps. Once the mounts are secure, snap the new fan onto the Hyper T4 and you're good to go. In style. The last piece of our Scorpion puzzle has arrived. I'm assuming the box that says priority mail is the motherboard, the box on the top is likely a component for our next PC video. Da, da, da. So yes, our motherboard arrived. This one's an M5A97 revised 2.0 ATX board equipped with AMD Crossfire, Realtek surround sound, and four DIMM slots. In the box you'll find your board, an installation CD, I don't even know who uses those anymore, a manual, this one's actually pretty good, a couple of SATA cables, an IO shield, and some warranty information. We picked this thing up brand new on eBay for a solid $70. So you can see our two primary PCIe ports are South Bridge, four DIMM slots capable of dual channeling, we'll get to that in a second, our AM3 Plus CPU house, voltage and surge heat sink, and our North Bridge. A very cool black and blue color scheme for sure. So let's get to building. Set your motherboard on its box. Have your AMD FX6300 ready, your Cooler Master Hyper T4 ready, and your RAM, which I forgot to place on the table. Whoa, there she is. Go ahead and pull out your processor, being very gentle. The stock heatsink actually should come out first. Since we have a custom cooler, go ahead and set the stock one to the side. We won't be needing it for this build. Pull out your processor and get ready to go. At this point, lift the metal latch on the side of the CPU housing. Grab a hold of your CPU, being careful not to touch any of its metal pins, especially if you have an AMD processor and match up the golden arrow on the chip to the white arrow on the motherboard. Align both of these and slide your CPU into its sockets. This requires absolutely no force at all. Once the CPU is secure, pull down the latch once more and snap it into place. Your CPU should be nice and snug at this point. Give it a little jiggle or two to make sure. Congratulations! You've just installed a central processing unit into a motherboard. Let's move on to that RAM. This is the memory our computer will access when performing temporary tasks. As you can see, this is very important. Align the indention on the card with the indention on the board. Pull back the hinges in the second and fourth DIMM slots and slide each RAM card into place. This will take some force, but please don't murder your mother board. Nah, that was a cheap one. Congratulations, you've just installed your RAM into yada yada yada, you get the hang of it. Grab a hold of that sweet custom Hyper T4 and pull off that plastic. Notice how we cable manage that fan cable as well. Collect your little baggie of thermal paste, open it carefully and apply about a pea sizes worth of glue smack in the center of our processor. Don't bother spreading it around and making a mess. Your cooler will take care of that. Speaking of which, the only thing you'll need out of that box of goodies that came with your Hyper T4 is the metal latch, which is compatible with most if not all AM3 motherboards. Slide it between the pipes and the heatsink of your cooler and set its hinges face down into the carved slot. Hinge the side without the black lever first. The other side proved to be a bit trickier. I needed a lot of force to snap it into place. A crazy amount of force. Once that's out of the way, turn that black lever 180 degrees to secure the cooler. Grab a hold of that fan cable that you hopefully cable managed and plug it into the fan header on your motherboard that reads something like CPU fan 1, something like that. 
As long as it says CPU something, you're probably all right. Refer to your manual if you have any doubts. Also note the unbelievably close clearance we have between our Hyper T4 and our Crucial Ballistics RAM. This is why low profile RAM is important for this build in particular. At this point, you can either skip ahead to the case installation of the video or keep watching if you've already got a handy test bench to use, which we prefer. Mount your motherboard onto the mounting pins you installed earlier and screw it into place. It should be pretty firm at this point. Go ahead and grab a hold of your graphics card, admire the sheer beauty of it for you know, a few seconds, and be sure to pull off any plastic covering your frame fans and or display outputs may have on them. Push down the lever on your first PCIe slot, mine was already down apparently, and snap your graphics card into place. So this shouldn't require much force. Take note of the power inputs on the card. In this case, the R9 380 requires two 6-pin power connectors. Normally, test benches have second level frames to you know, secure the top of the card, but in this case we use the makeshift prop underneath the board to keep it from leaning. So for now, most of the core of our build is in place and ready to be tested. So currently our operating system is installing. We've chosen to go with Windows 10 not only for its reliability, but it's just, it's plain and simple. Uh, get your product key, get a thumb drive, uh, and you're ready to go. Once you're ready to officially start installing everything, grab a hold of your case. We've got a few things to prep before we actually begin assembling. Since this case only comes with one fan, we assembled a second one in the front of the case. This one has a cool red accented LED in it. Route your cables appropriately. Install the I.O. shield that came with your motherboard. Should just be a nice little snap in place. Next, merge your motherboard, preferably without the graphics card already installed, with the case. This case came with mounting pins pre-installed, but if you are using a different case, be sure those pins are installed before you set your motherboard. In this step, you can use the heat sink as a handle of sorts. It's pretty firm, you'll be okay. Gather the screws that match the mounting pins and screw your motherboard into place. A magnetic screwdriver helps quite a bit, especially in those hard to reach places where it's easy to lose a screw or two. Install any other fans and or coolers into your case, secure them with the compatible screws and make sure to check your cable lengths. Again, there is nothing worse than installing something only to find out that its cable will not reach its intended header. Pop out the two slots in the back of your case that align with the two output plates on your graphics card. Slide the card into place in the same fashion as before. Use the larger screws that came with your case to secure it in place. At this point, turn your computer right side up and verify that all of your connections and mounts are in fact secure. Slide your hard drive into any of the drive cages in your case and use the custom tools to fasten it. 
At this point, it should be fairly rigid. Grab a hold of your power supply, verify that you have a dust filter or something in place down there, and secure your PSU with its fan facing downward. We should note, only do this if your computer case sits on legs and is raised from the floor. Even so, placing the tower on carpet can suffocate your unit. Assess your environment. Worst case, turn your PSU fan side up. Fun your cables throughout the front of your case, as we won't be needing roughly half of them anyway. Screw your PSU into place from the back. Use either the case screws or the ones that came with your power supply. It really doesn't matter. Pull out the largest power connector, your motherboard's power cable, and install it, including the 4-pin add-on to the side. Cable manage as you go. Next, let's tackle the graphics card. Plug both 6-pin power cables into your GPU. Again, find a way to cable manage these. Hunt down the 8-pin CPU connector near the top of the board and funnel the 8-pin cable to it from your power supply. This cable may come in the 4-pin times 2 array, but that's no big deal. Just install both together as one 8-pin unit. You can see here how we managed to run the cable underneath our graphics card. This next part is tricky and tedious, but it needs to be done. Unfortunately, it varies from motherboard to motherboard. The bunch of cables that came pre-installed in your case, well, those are the ones that need to be wired next. We won't go through this step as every case is different, as is every motherboard. However, you can refer to your manual for information regarding how and where to install the power switch, power LED, hard drive LED, USB slots, and audio inputs. When you finish wiring, also make sure to connect your hard drive via SATA to your motherboard and also plug it in from your power supply. Once you've performed your final component checks, reattach the left side panel and screw it into place from the back. And then behold. Plug in your monitors, keyboard, mouse, ethernet cable, and sound devices, boot into Windows or whatever operating system you choose via a thumb drive, install that OS, and then behold once more. We appreciate your interest in this computer building video. We'll be sure to upload a benchmark video as well for this build so that you know what you're getting for your dollar. But to make sure you don't miss it, be sure to subscribe for that and more on our channel. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.